Hello everybody, Jamie with Tree Puncher Support here, doing a tutorial today on the server.properties file. You might have heard about the server.properties file, and we give full access to it here in uh, at Tree Puncher. But basically, it's a text document with the extension .properties that holds all the settings for your server. So you have two options uh, for editing this file. One is for more advanced users, and you don't really need to do it this way. And that's through the FTP. And if you want to learn more about that, we have an FTP video on this YouTube channel or in our su uh, support knowledge base. But uh, we're going to go through the more easy way, which is right in the browser. And um, it's very easy and it's right in our game panel. So log into your game panel using the credentials that you were given when you signed up with first with your server. They will be in your email. And uh, whoops, I must have spelled that a little bit wrong. Here we go. There we are. And uh, we're going to go in into the service that we want to edit. So you'll be greeted with your dashboard, which lists all the services you have open with Tree Puncher. Mine's taking a little bit longer because I have every single service, but you should only have one or two, so this load time won't be as long as mine. So here we go. Here's our dashboard. So I, I, as I said, I have every single service because it's our test account. But let's go into Bucket because this is the one that I want to edit the server.properties for. So you get greeted by the edit server page. So this is your general configuration. You can change the name of it, the Archon password, which is only for advanced users. Don't worry about that. And you've got this nice little server status image. But that's not the tab I'm worried about is in the edit. The one I want is the default configuration files, which is right here. So click that. It'll do a nice little slide animation. And you've got four files that you can edit. You've got the bucket YAML, the ops.txt, which you can learn more as well from a video on our YouTube page. You have the whitelist, which again, you can learn more from our uh, on our YouTube page. And then the server properties. So this is the one that I'm talking about. And this will be all the settings for your server right here. Uh, as you can see, you can edit all these things just right in browser. And it's very nice, very easy to do. So basically, it looks a little bit hard at first. But really, um, every single line is a different setting, except for this, uh, the ones that have the hashtag in front of it. So the hashtag means that it's going to be a comment. So as the server looks over the this file, it's going to ignore everything that has a hashtag on the line. So if I want to add like anything you want to comment, like this is a cool server, like I mean I can do that. It doesn't really matter. The machine and the server will just completely ignore it. But anyway, all the other one lines are just settings. And then after the equal sign, it's looking for a value. So there's three different types of value that uh, it can, I guess, parse, but understand. So one is Boolean, which other means true or false. So it basically means it's either on or it's off. So like this, allow nether, it's either going to be true or false. All lowercase, either true or false. Not yes or no or zero or one. It has to be true or false. So I want nether to be not allowed on my server. I hit allow nether equals false. Uh, but I do want nether, so I'm going to make it true. So the second type of input it can receive is called a string. So a string is just a, a list of characters, so like the level name. So level name is how you generate worlds. And if you want more information about generating worlds, go watch our world management video. We go over this in detail. But basically, you can put any string of anything you want in this line and it'll accept it so like world kazoo and then your world will be named kazoo it'll actually generate a new world but like i said if you want more information on that go watch our world manager video um and then there is as well a number so number like the server port which you can actually change because we lock it in through the server.properties file so there are a few things that you can configure and there's a few things that no matter if you change it it will cha uh, it will automatically default every single time you ch set this file or start the server so like for example uh you might want to say oh your max players you can change it up to 10 or 20. No, that will reset uh, because that's the way that our, our management works. So you can't actually change the number of players you have on your server. That will automatically change. But things that you can change are, pardon me, we got the allow nether. You can change the level name. You can allow flight. The enable query is just whether or not Minecraft gra grabs statistics off your server. So you can change that to true or false. Allow flight. Server port you can't change. Query port you can't change. Level type. So this is a bit of an interesting one. And this is one that doesn't really accept a string. But it's a different type of string. Uh, so basically there are different types of of level. So the default one is just the, what the hills and the valleys and the water and all that stuff. And then you can actually make it, and I don't know why they make it all capitals, but they do. You, uh, you can make it flat. 
So that will make the world completely flat with no no hills, nothing. It's meant for just building. And then you can also do one called large biomes. And so large biomes are just extra large biomes. Like you have a big snow biome or a big ocean biome. or It's just a little bit more realistic than having the biomes right next to each other. But uh, by default, it's just default. Enable Archon. Uh, this will doesn't really matter. You don't need to worry too much about that. Level Seed. So this one's a bit of an interesting one. Uh, this is a random string of characters, and then it will generate a world based on that. So the reason this is helpful is if you have a seed from a level that, let's say, one of your favorite YouTubers is using, and they're like, oh, here's a level seed, and then it'll generate the same world they have based on that seed. So it can be anything. It can be 777744444, or it can be... Uh, you know, Matt sucks and Jamie rules. And then if I typed in Matt sucks, Jamie rules and generated a world with that, with that seed and you put that same seed into yours, our world would generate the exact same. Server IP you can't change. Max build height you can change, but I recommended it leaving at default because that can crash a server pretty awfully, qu pretty quick. Spawn NPCs, this will uh, depend whether or not you'll have... Um, villagers in your in your um in your city or sorry in your world or uh npcs like that so i think it's just testificates right now i think it also includes witches as well now but uh those are just the non-playable characters what the npc stands for and then the whitelist uh whitelist is whether or not you want people to like certain um, people to join your server we have a video on setting up a whitelist and what it means so go watch that if you are curious what a whitelist is debug Set that to false. It's only for developers. Don't worry about debug at all. Spawn animals. That's a bit, uh, you know, a bit self-explanatory. If you want animals like pigs, cows, sheep, I don't know, bats, I guess. Uh, spawn animals equals true. Snooper. That's another thing where just it's Minecraft sort of gathers statistics from you. Hardcore. So hardcore mode. If you turn it to true, if you die, you're dead forever and you can't join that server again. Uh, texture pack. This is a bit of an interesting one. It is a string. Um, I'm going to put a video up on how to force a texture pack eventually, but basically if you upload a texture pack to your server, you can force people to use that. So if you want people to only use facts on your server, then you have to, you have to make check to make sure they're using that texture pack before they're allowed in the server. And then this is where you put the name of the texture pack. So that's a string. Online mode. This one's a bit of an interesting one. So you can actually turn online mode to false, and that means that the server will not check Minecraft databases to make sure it's a legitimate copy of Minecraft connected to your server. So if you want what's called, uh, I guess, hacked Minecraft or whatever, or if you haven't paid for Minecraft, you can change this online mode to false, and then you can connect to the server. Just know that skins won't work because skins work off the Minecraft server, not your own server. So you can set it to false, and people who haven't bought Minecraft can connect to your server. And we do offer that. It's not illegal. It's uh, endorsed by Mojang. But uh, if you want to support Mojang, please buy the buy the copy of the game and set online mode to true. PvP. This means player versus player. Uh, if it's set to false, you can't hurt your fellow friends. I guess it could also be called friendly fire. Uh, difficulty. This is an integer or a number. So it goes from 0 to 3. Uh, zero means peaceful, one means easy, two means normal, and three means hard. So that's just difficulty levels. Server name, this is uh, the same thing as the server name in the edit default uh, config files. And this will be the one that shows up uh, when people connect to your server uh, next to your message of the day. Game mode, so game mode is an integer, and that depends on whether it's survival, which is zero, creative, which is one, and then adventure mode which is two so if you have an um, adventure map you want to set the game mode to two max players you can't change spawn monsters very self-explanatory true or false if you want monsters to spawn view distance keep view distance at 10 it's another thing that can crash the server really 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 quickly if you really want you can set it up a little bit higher and see a little bit further in in the world but by default, it's 10. Just keep it at 10. It'll be fine. I promise. Generate structures. This is whether villages will generate in desert biomes or you know plains biomes or just villages will spawn in general. Spawn protection. Okay, this one's a bit of an interesting one as, as well. When you spawn into a world, there is a certain radius of blocks around the spawn, which people except for ops can br can't break blocks. And that's just so that when uh, if you have a griefer on your server and they put like 
a million tons of dynamite into the spawn area, people won't immediately just fall to their death. So that means that the spawn will just stay protected, basically. And this is the radius in blocks around that spawn. And then MOTD, this is a this is a string, and you can set it to anything, like Matt sucks a whole bunch. And that will be the message of the day when people connect to your server, they will see. Boom! And that's every single one of the server.properties settings. If you have any more questions, please contact us at contact at treepuncher.com. Note that I will not be offering any support in the YouTube comments below. So, I mean, you can comment and I'll read it. Actually, I probably won't read it. But listen, I love you guys and have a great day. Hope this was helpful. Contact us if you have any questions.